You guys hear me okay? I feel like I have something helping me project my voice, but I'm not sure what. But you guys can hear me? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, let's pray. God, we're so thankful uh, for who you are. Thank you for being the God whose love never fails, that your love never gives up on us, and it never runs out on us. God, I pray tonight that we would encounter you in a way that would turn our lives upside down. God, that we would become different people as a result of what you do in our hearts on this night. And we thank you for that. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Well, we've been in a series called Flipped for the last uh, three weeks. We talked about the Roman centurion uh, who encountered Jesus, and uh, Jesus healed his servant, and his life got flipped upside down as he encountered Jesus. Uh, last week, we talked about a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years and was unable to be healed, was unable to be well. Um, she saw doctors and all kinds of things, but nothing could, could help her. Until she encountered Jesus, she was forever healed, and her life was turned upside down. Today we're going to encounter uh, somebody who encountered Jesus as well, uh, and their life wasn't exactly turned upside down the way that those other two stories, and, and really many people who encounter Jesus, unfortunately his life kind of remained the same. And uh, we're going to jump into this story right away. Uh, if you have a Bible with you... Um, you're lucky, because I don't think we have any under the chair, so I apologize. Um, but if you have your phone, feel free to pull it out and open it up uh, to the Internet or your Bible app. And we're going to go to uh, Mark chapter uh, 10 tonight. And if you don't have a Bible app, just listen to my beautiful voice. It's a lot like Mickey Mouse, so it's good. It's very comfortable for those of us here in Orlando, Florida. Um, but God, we're, uh, we're excited to jump into your word tonight. And we're, uh, we're going to jump in full force. Now, uh, this is a story that is um, it's a pretty popular story. You may have heard it before. But if you haven't, uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna find some interesting things tonight. We're going to start in verse 17, and it's about this rich young man. How many of you guys would like to be rich? Let's be honest. Let's just be honest for a second. Like to be rich. Uh, I, I am not rich, um, and now that tax season has come, I am much less rich, um, because when you get old, you actually have to pay taxes. It's exciting. So uh, finding, finding out uh, those wonderful things about life, it's just a joy. Um, but <laughs> this man was rich, and we're going to learn about him as he encounters Jesus. In verse 17 of Mark chapter 10, here's where the story picks up. It says, uh, and he, as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him. This is Jesus. This man runs up and kneels before Jesus and asks him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, this guy was rich. He had probably a pretty good life. Uh, he was a Jewish man. He grew up in a culture that revolved around uh, the Jewish religion. Uh, they believed very deeply in God. They, they, their, their history was shaped very much by God. And every Jewish uh, young person would have learned the Ten Commandments. How many of you guys could list the Ten Commandments? I would struggle. Um, I'd be like, eight, nine, dang it, I can never get the, the last one. But, um, but they knew all the Ten Commandments. In fact, there were 633 laws, and they knew most of them. So this guy comes up and he says, what do I got to do to inherit eternal life? I mean, this life is pretty sweet, but I definitely don't want it to end after this. I want to go to the next one, and I want it to be good. And Jesus says, hey, wait a second, whoa, 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 why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Now, he's setting up the man for uh, a little bit later in the conversation, but one of the things Jesus is doing right now is he's creating a divide for this guy. He's saying, look, uh, you cannot believe that I'm good and not God. Only one person is good, and that is God, and actually, I am God, so either don't call me good or call me God. That's what Jesus is saying. It's a pretty amazing statement that he makes. A lot of people think, like, Jesus never claimed to be God. He claimed to be God in a thousand ways. In fact, that's what got him crucified, was claiming to be God. Um, but he says, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. And he says this, you know the commandments. He knows. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Don't defraud. Honor your father and mother, et cetera, et cetera. Verse 20 says, and he said to him, teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. I've checked, checked those all off the list. I'm a good guy. 
Jesus said, looking at him, he loved him. Man, this, that's what an incredible statement. Jesus hears this guy come up to him, and this guy is claiming that he's good enough to inherit eternal life. And that's that moment when, like, you know, you're, you're a parent, and your little two-year-old comes waddling up to you, and they're like, Daddy, I, I brought you your book. And, and you're like, that's sweet, little boy. You know, like, that's really sweet. And then the next, the next thing the, the little boy's doing is like, Daddy, I could drive your car. And you're like, no, you can't, but that's sweet, and I love it. That's awesome. Um, and Jesus is kind of looking at this guy, and, and he, he thinks, you think you're good. There really is only one that's good, and that's God alone. And, and I think Jesus kind of felt sorry for this guy because the guy thought he pretty much had it all together. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him, and he said to him, you still lack one thing. See, uh, sell all that you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. You know, a lot of times I think people think that to, to love someone else, you've got to tell them what they want to hear, right? Oh, be tolerant, love me, like, be nice to me, love me. Sometimes to love somebody, you've got to tell them the opposite of what they want to hear. Verse 22, disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. So Jesus encounters this guy who, for all intents and purposes, thinks he's got it all together. He's living life the way that he wants to live life, and he figures, I'm pretty good. He goes to Jesus and says, what do I got to do to make sure I get eternal life? And Jesus said, it's cute that you think you're good, but you're not. Only God is good. All of us have failed. All of us have, have messed up in this life. And only one is good, and that's God. And you need, for eternal life, you need to give me all of your heart. And the man who was rich said, no, 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 don't touch my riches. And disheartened it and sad, he just walks away. You know, um, I'm a big spam fan. I'm a huge spam fan. It's literally the most incredible food on planet Earth. In fact, it's the only food. And I eat it three meals a day. Mm, smells wonderful. Um, spam. Smells incredible. So I'm going to kind of see if I can get it out here. Because the best is when it comes out all at once. That's that's when you know it's good. When it comes out, oh, oh there it is. <laughs> that right there spells breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If I've ever seen anything that spells breakfast, lunch, and dinner. When I wake up in the morning, I go work out, obviously. <laughs> and after I work out, I gotta eat some spam because you want to make sure that you have plenty of good food in your body after working out. Spam has protein. In fact, this thing has uh, 42 grams of protein in this can. Not sure how, but it does. And uh, man, I'm telling you what, I wouldn't want to eat anything else. In fact, I don't know if there is anything else to eat. I eat this stuff three times a day and seven days a week. It is that good. Spam comes in many forms. There's spicy spam. There's sweet spam. There's yum yum spam. I made that one up. That's what I call spam late at night when nobody knows I'm eating it. <laughs> spam is incredible. And you know, the, the weird thing is, is that once in a while, I don't know, just once in a while, I, I don't know, I get this whiff of something else, something a little different. And I wonder what that might be. Then I just eat some spam and it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. So good. So lovely. And you know, um, I think it's easy for, for us to, to kind of be in this room, in this moment right now. You're sitting in there in your chair, and you're looking up at me, and I look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I've got this spam in front of me, and I'm just talking about how amazing it is to eat. And then I eat it three times a day, and you're thinking to yourself, you're going to die of cancer and a heart attack <laughs> simultaneously <laughs> tomorrow, right? <laughs> and... Uh, I don't know if I can get this up. And all the while, I'm blinded to the reality.
funny that there's a beautiful morsel of goodness right here. It's called steak. For those of you who are vegetarians, I'll pray for you. <laughs> that is steak. That is good. Who would like to eat this steak? Right up here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on up. You're a baseball player. No? Oh, you just kick it with a baseball player. Player. That's okay. Just right here. Here, you can sit with me. Right here. Here you go. All right. Mm. Mm. You gonna eat that? You gonna give me a bite? Just kidding. Look, never try to take a man's steak. So here's the deal. The life that we live um, on this planet, so often there's a snake right next to us. But we've got these blinders on, and we think that spam is really all that we want, and it's all that we need. And the, the reality about spam is it actually does, it fills our belly. If, if you're hungry and you eat spam, you don't throw it up, you won't be hungry anymore. But could you imagine just eating spam three times a day when you could be eating steak, right? And what Jesus and this rich young man the interactions that they have, what Jesus is trying to do is he's trying to get this rich young man who's got his eyes fixed on the things of this life to take his eyes off of the things that he has and look at something a little bit better. C.S. Lewis, he's one of the greatest authors of all time, loved Jesus. He actually was an atheist. He was a professor at Oxford, which is not like Lake Sumter or Valencia. No offense if you taking classes there. It's a great school. He's a professor there. He's an atheist. And he begins to investigate who Jesus is. And he walks away completely changed. Later on in his life, he, he had this deep relationship with God. And he said this incredible quote. And I want you guys to pick this up. You may have heard it before, but I think it's incredible. He said, we're so often content to eat mud pies. We don't really know what mud pies are. That's not like a thing here. But a mud pie is basically, in the mud, you kind of like create a little pie, right? Some of you guys who like who grew up in a poor family like me, you knew, you know what it's like to play in the mud. That's what I did. You know, like my, my mom would be like, you know, hey, go out and play for like seven hours and come back when you're filthy, right? Like that was like <laughs> how we used to play. Like my mom didn't even know what an Xbox was, right? So so we, we did that kind of stuff growing up. But the thing is, C.S. Lewis has said, look, we're content eating our mud pies. I'm just going to be like, I play in the mud, but eat the mud. No, thank you. You get, like, worms and stuff. It's atrocious. It's good stuff. Poop and mouth. I'm just kidding. I've never had worms. But that is true. Don't eat mud pies. It's bad for you. But we're content to eat our mud pies. We, we got our mud pies because we're off to the corner and we're like, yeah, mud pie. You know? And what C.S. Lewis says is so true. Yet God has prepared for us a banquet table. A banquet table. And it's hard for us to believe because you're like, man, seriously, mud pies? Who would do that? But just think about this for just a moment. Just think about our own lives. Think about what Jesus is calling us into. Let me give you a, a quick example. Jesus paints a picture of his love for us by dying on a cross, right? Laying his life down for us. And you know marriage is actually supposed to be like that? Did you know that? Paul writes in, in the book of 1 Corinthians that marriage should be like this, where the husband lays down his life for his wife, just like Jesus did for the church. Think about that. All his wants and desires and needs come secondary to hers. Girls, how many of you wouldn't mind ending up with a guy like that, right? The reality is, is we trade and cheapen that for temporary gratification. So often. So often. Say, you know what? I know this is what God has for me in the future, but I, I'm not sure about Mr. Right. I'm a little bit more interested in Mr. Right now. Right? He's coming after me. He's telling me I'm beautiful. He's telling me I'm great. He's telling me I'm smart. He's telling me all of these things. So I'm going to give myself to him because he's here in front of me. And he's making me feel good right here. We take the right now and the easy instead of what Jesus actually desires for us. And that's just one area of our life, right? 
Think about people in their finances for just a second. I know this is a little bit kind of like a little bit out of your world. But when you're 18, 19, 20, you're at college, they're going to start offering you these things called credit cards. <laughs> and they're going to say, it's free money. Spend it. Right? <laughs> and then the bill is going to come. <laughs> and that's a huge, huge problem for many, many people, even Christians, Americans, people who they earn a certain amount of money, but they spend more than that. Because the credit card gives them the opportunity to have instant satisfaction. Who needs to save for something? Just buy it now and pay it off later. The reality is we live our lives like this. We trade what God would want to give us, this steak, which honestly, this isn't the greatest steak I've ever prepared in my life. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It's okay, right? It's, it's pizza, right? It's decent. It's more about the smell and the analogy, okay? But enjoy would you rather eat the sand? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, good. Just check it. Just check it. Just make sure. Do it. We trade so often what God really wants to give us for what's right in front of us, for what's right now, for what's convenient, for what makes sense to us. And you know what? Sometimes what is convenient is a lot of fun. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to tell you that it's all as gross looking as spam. But in comparison, I want you to understand that what God wants to give you compared to what the world will hand you, it's steak and spam. It's steak and spam. This series we've been talking about flipped. It's about people who encounter Jesus and their lives get turned upside down. They recognize that rather than their spam, they don't want their spam anymore. They want to give their spam over to Jesus and take the steak that Jesus is offering. The reality is this. Christian life isn't easy. It's hard, but it's good. It's good. Steak's not easy to prepare. It takes time. To grill it just right, you have to season it and spice it. Spam, you can take it right out of the can and just eat it. Gross, though. <laughs> and the life that Jesus wants to offer to you, it's, it's not easy. In fact, if you continue on in the story in Mark, Jesus says, look, a rich person entering the kingdom of heaven, it's difficult. It's very difficult. It's as hard as getting a camel through an eye of a needle. That's hard, right? He says it's actually impossible to get a rich man into heaven in and of himself. Think about fitting a camel. We're talking about a huge animal through an eye of a needle. How, how possible is that? It's an easy answer. It's impossible, right? You guys are like, is this a trick question? That Bible's tricky, right? No, it's impossible. But what Jesus says is this. With man, if it were up to that rich man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And he goes on and he says, uh, the, the disciples are like really blown away after he says this. He says, then who can be saved? Jesus says, with man it's impossible, not with God, all things are possible. And then Peter began to say, see, we've left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, truly I say to you, there is no one, listen to this, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mothers or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, lands, with persecutions, and in this age, in the age to come, eternal life. You know what? We think when we give things over to God that it's, it's the hardest thing in the world. And yeah, it's hard. But I'm going to tell you what, it's good. When I was 17 years old, I remember sitting in the driveway of my house with my youth pastor. And I was really at the point where I encountered Jesus and my life was getting flipped. But I had all these friends. I knew these friends were not good friends for me. I loved them, but I knew that they were tearing me down and dragging me down. And I knew that to follow Jesus, I'd have to hand over those friendships to him and let him do whatever he wanted to do with them. And I thought that it was the hardest decision I'd ever make. Let me tell you something. In hindsight, in retrospect, it's the easiest decision I would ever make. When I, get, when I gave those friendships over to Jesus and put my trust in him, Jesus replaced those crappy friendships that were very self-centered, looking back I realized that, with incredible friendships, with people who loved me and who cared not just about 
themselves, but cared about me and my good for the long haul, right? He sent me to this incredible school where I learned about him and I learned about ministry, and he gave me lasting friendships that I still have to this day. And the friendships I have now here at Mosaic Church are deeper and stronger than I've ever experienced. People who would give their lives for me and people I would give my lives for. Like a woman. <laughs> Not a cat. Cats are gross. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Jesus is trustworthy. And if you'll hand over your spam to him, and you think your life is great, but I'm telling you it's spam in comparison. He's got the... The most incredible, even better than that, Ruth's crisp, juicy steak that he wants to give you. Now, it comes with some persecutions. Jesus said that. It comes with difficulty. It's not easy, but it's the best. I'm going to pray, and we're going to head back into the lobby. Here's what we're going to do. Um, actually, let me just go ahead and pray now, and then we're going we're gonna to move on. I'll, I'll tell you what's next. But what I want you to do is, in your heart, I want you to think to yourself, what am I holding on to? What is my spam in the can? What am I addicted to? I eat it over and over and over and over again. Whether it's what people think about you, whether it's a, a habit or a sin that you've fallen into or stuck in, whether it's an attitude that you have, maybe with your parents or teachers or friends, whether it's a label that's been attached to you because of something you've done or something that's been done to you, whatever you're holding on to and you can't give over to Jesus, don't be like that rich man. Give it to him. Don't be like the guy with the mud pie. Don't be eating your spam. Give your life over to Jesus, and he's got something so much better for you. It'll be hard, but it'll be good. I want you guys to ask yourself, what is that one thing? We're going to do some pretty cool stuff here in a few minutes. So let's pray, and I'll let you know what